at this. We have our first little sprout babies coming up. It looks like just the early girls and the big boys. I see two early girls and then there's like a teeny tiny little speck there that you can hardly see in the camera, but that is another early girl trying to pop through and I can see just a teeny teeniest little bit of green right there too for the last big boy. I don't see any activity out of the cherry tomatoes yet, which is interesting because if I remember correctly, I think last year those were the first ones to sprout, but so exciting. It's only been a few days, so I feel like they're a little ahead of schedule. what I am so ready for this tarp to come off we put it on here to further insulate the greenhouse while we had the heater running for the tomatoes that were in there but now it's just really annoying and in the way and this panel has slid from the door and I can't even get to it to um, adjust the clips to hold it back in place because of this tarp over it so while Michael's here this weekend helping me build the storage shed this thing is definitely coming off <laughs> does anyone else have a ridiculous amount of squirrels in their neighborhood because spring hasn't even started yet and already they're digging stuff up. <laughs> How about you, Missy? Are you gonna help keep the squirrels away? Say, I try my best, but I'm not out here 24-7. afternoon. I have just clocked out for lunch and I'm going to try to get a couple more steps done on this. I should be able to get the entire bottom frame done and then I'm going to stop there just because before I continue on with it I want to let Michael look at those holes that didn't line up during the first step before I start building up with it and make sure that it's not gonna hurt anything or see if we need to drill some new holes because so far it doesn't look like anything else is going to need to go like into that spot. But I just don't, he's an engineer, so I trust him to look at these instructions and all the parts and be able to tell me definitively whether I should continue on with it, drill some new holes or what, what we should do. So, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and I've got three of the walls together or well, Realistically, it's just kind of like the foundation for the walls. And then the front piece that has the little doorway is step three. And then, or actually, no, I think step three is actually assembling them together into like a U shape. And then step four is the threshold part. So that's what I'm going to attempt to get done today. Again, we're gonna see how this goes because from the way the first step turned out, it's just a toss up whether everything's gonna to go together like it's supposed to. But then after that, I'm stopping until Saturday and then he's going to come over and um, help me out with the rest of it. Um, honestly, from the directions, it looks like it's pretty simple to put together by myself if everything was drilled correctly and was able to be put together according to the instructions. But since that's not the case, I'm definitely enlisting his help with this one. But anyhow, I'm gonna stop chit chatting and get to it because I only have an hour. So far, so good.
think that took me all of about five to 10 minutes, honestly. And here I was thinking I would need my whole lunch break, but so far the rest of this is going together smoothly. So maybe our little incident's only gonna be that very first step, but I don't know, we'll see, I guess. Um, I'm gonna stop from here because I'm moving on to this step. <clears throat> and so this is where the walls start to go up. And I just don't wanna mess with that until I let him look at this. So I am gonna stop there, but I don't know. So far so good-ish, I guess. We have, a, we have a floor and I can kind of at least get a visual for how big this thing is gonna be because my son's motorcycle, So he bought this thing for like $500. And of course it didn't run. And so it needs a few things done to it. But anyway, moral of the story is I have crap sitting on my patio now and it drives me crazy having clutter. And so I have this and then Logan's big ass dirt bike is in my actual garden shed. So now things are displaced from my garden shed. Like my, well, you can, I don't know if you can see it. It's behind the, um, here. Oh, there we go. That pressure washer is sitting out. My lawn mower is sitting out. My little garden tiller is sitting out. Um, I just, I had to display so much stuff. So when this is finished, both his motorcycle, Logan's dirt bike are gonna go in here. And then I have like one of those big uh, Schwinn cruiser bicycles, which is in the basement and it's worked fine so far, but it is pretty heavy. So like hauling it up and down the steps every time we wanna go for a bike ride is kind of a pain in the butt. So I'll probably see if I can't fit it in here too. If not, I guess really no big deal, but it would be definitely preferable if I can. But um, I believe the motorcycle and the dirt bike are pretty well gonna take up all the room, but that's fine because that's what this is for. So once we get it done and get stuff in, I'll see if I wanna put any kind of shelving in it. I don't think there's gonna be room for that um, with both bikes in here, but I don't know. We'll see, but for now I'm going to honestly just enjoy the warmth and the sunshine because it is very rare to have this in, well now February, so. Anyway, I will see you again later. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Nose. That's not a good toy for babies. No, ma'ams. Nice try, though. I appreciate the attempt. what I found this morning. We have a cherry tomato sprout. I don't see anything out of the other two yet, so we'll see what happens. But all three of the early girls sprouted, which is great. And I thought I saw a, another little sprout coming through with the big boy, but it was not. So we have two of the three. And since these are two-year-old seed packets, honestly, the fact that I got at least one out of each is great. So we'll see if any more of the cherries come up, but if not, at least I have one. And the early girls, honestly, like that one back there looks like it shot up pretty good. I don't want it to get too leggy though, so it kind of stinks that none of the uh, bell peppers have sprouted yet, so I can't really take the lid off, but look at all of these little leaves. So just a little fun fact, these little leaves are called cotyledon. And so as the rest of the leaves start to come on over the next few weeks, these little cotyledon leaves will die off and fall off. They are essentially like the embryo of a seedling. But anyway, I'm gonna throw the lid back on and let these little babies keep growing. Well, hello. Look who came to visit Mama while Miss Emily's outside. See, I tend to just stick to the basement when Emily's around because I don't really like other kitty cats in my house. <laughs> She's my little old lady. Miss Ember will be 17 years old this spring in April. <laughs> what do you think about that? Huh? Yeah, she's purring. <laughs>
good afternoon. I can't work on the shed today, so I thought I would do a little work in the garden. Um, I had my old raised bed that I needed to break down. It was supposed to be made of cedar, which isn't supposed to rot, but it definitely rotted. Um, so when I moved it, it was originally over closer to the house, and I had a big tomato cage built up onto it, and that was my tomato bed. And so the plan was to pull all the soil out and then move it to over here. And unfortunately, after we removed all the soil, we saw that it had all started to rot all around the bottom ring. Um, so I finally decided to take it apart so I could haul the lumber off to the farm to be burned. And as you could see, it was so rotten that I didn't even need to worry about removing the bolts because I got the one on the top out and I went to work on the one on the bottom. And the backside where the nut was attached was so rusted that it would not break loose. So I finally gave up and was like, well, this wood is rotted enough. Let's just see if it'll pull right out. And it turned out the entire thing was able to just be pulled apart. So if that tells you anything about the state of that thing. Um, so anyway, I got that broken down. And on Sunday, whenever I go to pick Logan up, I'm going to swing through Perryville and I need to take that and take it to the farm. I also have some soil that I need to haul off as well. And I'm going to have to put it probably into a container. It's going to be extremely heavy, so I don't even know if I'll be able to take the whole batch at once, but um, basically just getting things cleaned up so that I can get this garden ready to be finished so that by the 1st of March, I can start actually planting in it. So let me just kind of walk you around and I will show you and explain what I'm doing. Okay, so right here where I took apart um, that old raised bed, I am putting another bed like these, except it's going to be one row shorter and then one row wider so that this will fit perfectly over the top of it without covering up the holes in the blocks. So it's going to come here and it will go all the way back to the edge of this landscape fabric. And then it's gonna go out to about right in here. And then this is a compost bin, and then I'm gonna get a second one just like it. Um, and the reason I'm using this is that after the tornado that hit my grandparents' house, they had a million of these things donated. And so I took one that did not have a lid and didn't, couldn't really be used for much else. And I'm gonna grab another one from their shop too. And that way, so it's free. So, you know, may as well make use of it. And then um, right here, I'm gonna have a couple of um, big pots that will have some container tomatoes in them. And those I'm actually gonna do my brandy wine, so they're gonna be heirloom, but I'm gonna grow them in a pot. That way they can stay out here in the summer, but whenever the time comes, I can move them into the greenhouse and continue growing them into the cool season. So that's the plan for this. And instead of being one block high, this one is actually gonna be two blocks high because it does need to be deep enough for tomatoes to grow in it. Um, and then for these two beds, um, so I filled them with topsoil because it was so much cheaper to get a load of soil from the nursery than to buy a bunch of bags of soil. But I decided that I'm not gonna do that again to fill the bed I'm putting here because as you can see, it's full of weeds. So, you know, I did not really think about the fact that it could be full of weeds and it was. And so after I put it in and started to grow some greens and some green beans, it was late season. So it was like probably August, maybe whenever I got these beds filled and you know, a bunch of weeds sprouted and then plus topsoil just doesn't have very many nutrients. So then you have to amend the soil and that was kind of a lot of work. And so I decided that I'm just gonna take about half the soil out of each of these beds and then I'm gonna transplant it into the bottom of this one. And then I'm just buying bags of garden soil. Um, it's gonna cost me probably three times more to do it that way, but the soil is gonna be a lot better quality in the long run. So that is what I'm gonna do. And then I have to finish filling these blocks. I did just right through here back in the fall because I wanted to see if I could get some more beets and carrots before the end of the season and I did not. <laughs> so I need to finish filling all the rest of them. And for these, I'm going to do a mixture of sand and soil because I'm growing beets, carrots, and onions out of all of these. And then I've got rock down here, but I still need to get rock around all of the rest. And I was kind of just waiting until I got the last bed in and that way I can rock around it. So that is the plan. I believe next weekend we are picking up the concrete blocks and I will work on getting them placed and then I can start getting the soil transferred over. Okay, and so the reason that I don't have the soil yet and I'm not planning to get it yet is because last summer I had a fungus that just like 
completely wiped through my entire garden, which was why I ended up breaking everything down in like late July, early August and just redoing everything. Because before I used to have my garden right in here. I had one row down along the side of the greenhouse that made an L shape around and then back um, where you see I don't know if it's focusing, but anyway, those are the doors off the old tomato cage that I was using in this bed over here to cover up green beans. And I will probably use them again for that purpose later on. But anyway, so I wanted to move all of that stuff here where it gets the best sunlight in the yard. And because of all the fungus, I just went ahead and did it in the middle of last summer because everything was dying. It just, I was constantly fighting it, spraying with copper fungicide, constantly trying to keep it from killing my plants. And I finally gave up and just ripped everything out except the tomatoes. I was able to save the tomatoes and then relocated the entire garden over here and got new soil. And trying to figure out where that fungus came from because I've never had this problem before in my life. And I think, I have the most likely scenario figured out. And so last year was the first year that I started any of my plants from seed. And I had gone in the middle of January and purchased a couple of bags of potting soil. They were the big bags of potting soil. That's what I always get because the more soil you get, so it was a two cubic foot bag versus when you get like an eight quart bag, just the price for the amount that you get is better when you get the larger sizes. That's pretty much just standard across the board for everything, right? If it's in bulk, it's probably cheaper. But so I did that. And the problem is those bags of soil were from the previous season and they had been rained on, snowed on, had all of the elements. And I think that they probably had gotten fungus just from being in those plastic bags for so long and drawing moisture. That's my guess. I don't know if that's true, but it's the most likely scenario I can come up with. So because of that, I don't want to take the chance of doing that again. So right now they have seven bags of my usual soil in stock, which means they're all last seasons, right? So I am going to wait until they put out the fresh soil for this season, which I'm hoping will be by March 1st, because I need to be able to plant in these beds by that point. So at that point, I'm then going to buy probably at least 20 bags would be my guess. And they're $10 a bag. So, you know, you do the math on that versus it's like 60 bucks for a tractor bucket load of dirt. But I think in the long run, it's going to do me better. I am going to kind of watch and see what the weather does because right now it is Groundhog's Day and it is 64 degrees outside, or at least it will be later. The high of the day, which should be around three o'clock is going to be 64. But supposedly the last half of February is supposed to drop back down in the 40s. And so I just, I know that with my luck, if I went and started planting stuff now, um, we would probably have like some kind of a crazy freeze the first of March and then it would all die. So I am waiting for March this year. I'm not going to be impatient. Um, so anyway, that is the plan. And I'm going to cut this short because I know the rest of this video is going to need to be dedicated to building the garden shed and I don't want this to be insanely long. So I'm going to stop here and then the next video you see from me um, will probably have more of the starts of me working in this garden. So I'll see you then. Right. As suspected, nothing else needs to go anywhere. There's no good rhyme or reason that the holes didn't line up. They just didn't line up. So he went ahead and drilled new holes and put the screws in. And so we're going to start building up from here.
so we have everything done except for the door or doors and we have to slide it back into place we need to level up the back first um, but it's going on five o'clock we're starting to run out of light a little bit and we kind of just said to heck with it we're done until tomorrow so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this vlog up here and then the next vlog will be the finishing up of this and then also sorting and organizing everything um, in my carport and patio so that will be on the next one so thanks for watching